Hey guys, Chad here again, Flying S Models. Uh, I'm going to take a little time tonight to show you about uh, making seat belts for model aircraft using lead foil and wire. Uh, you can Here's an example of a finished product that can be made. It's a really super simple technique and uh, I actually like it uh, better than some of the um, etched belts or even fabric belts that you buy. Uh, just because my personal style is it provides a little more relief uh, for painting. It gives a little more three-dimensional look rather than um, a 2D look that you often get in some of the etched belt lines. Uh, these are seat belts I made for a 132nd uh, P47 uh, Thunderbolt that I'm working on. So uh, let me take a little time and show you how it's done. What I like about this technique is it uh, is really simple to do and it takes uh, just some easy, uh, readily available materials. Um, about all that I need is a hobby knife, finger blade, a set of tweezers uh, to uh, form the um, buckles, uh, some fine solder um, I got in this case, let me see, this thing is uh, 0.015 inch diameter, so really thin stuff here, and a piece of uh, lead foil. Um, I like to use a little bit thicker gauge because, like I said, I like to have a little bit of dimension uh, to the belts. Um, the seat I'll use just is this uh, 132nd uh, Spitfire resin seat that came out of a PCM uh, Spitfire. And just for comparison, uh, here is the seat. Uh, with the belts that I had used, I actually replaced the seat because, as you can see, uh, this one uh, that came with the kit is uh, gargantuan. Uh, and grossly out of scale big. So I replaced it with a uh, Barracuda resin seat and then form my own seat belt here. So let me uh, show you how it's done. First off, I just take a metal scale, or any scale for that matter will do, uh, flatten out the uh, lead foil, take, uh, determine kind of the thickness of the belts, and then just cut them out and small strips and I'm going to go ahead and cut two strips so I can show you the basic technique all right there's two strips roughly the same uh, width uh, and about the same length not that that matters we'll cut it to sh to, uh, to length uh, based on the kit seat that we're working on to uh, make the buckles what I do is I take a small piece of styrene square rod and you can sand it down or cut it down to whatever dimension you want um, I'll just leave this the dimension that it was uh, just for demonstration purposes take this solder and basically wrap it multiple times around almost like you're gonna make a spring so you wrap it to get around the rod I like to compress it kind of flat and that's kind of what it looks like uh, and then we'll start cutting out the buckles so to make the buckles I just take my knife and I cut right along across the uh, solder wire and then you can just slide off all of those and as you can see these small little buckles have been formed and then you can basically uh, take some tweezers and bend them to assuming I can pick the dang things up um, you can take some tweezers and bend them kind of to whatever shape that you want all right so there you go one buckle and just with a little bit of rod you can see how many buckles you can make so the next step is to basically start creating the belts and connecting them. I like to have uh, multiple section belts just to add a little dimension. Um, it may not be completely realistic uh, or accurate, um, uh, but that's kind of not the bottler that I am. I'm not a rivet counter per se, so I don't worry too much about uh, exact accuracy as long as it provides an overall representation and gives me a nice look. I, I kind of go with that. So uh, basically you take the a belt you bend a little hook in it you take one of your buckles assume I can pick it up and you put it into the hook and then I like to take a little bit of CA and dab it right in there which I'll do here in a second and then bend the hook over and kind of lock the buckle in place 
So hold on, let me get some CA and I'll show you what it looks like after that. So I've got some CA here, I'll squirt out just a drop. That's about all I'll need. Take a little toothpick and dab it. Let's see if I can show you, dab it right here on the hook. And then put the buckle where you want it and bend the hook over to kind of lock it in place, like so. Now in this case, you could see the buckle is a little bit wider than the belt itself, um, but I could have made the buckle smaller. This is just for demonstration purposes, so you'll get, you get the idea. Now I've done the same thing with the second belt. Except in this case, now I have two belts. In this case, I'm going to just go ahead and take my tweezers. And I'm going to put a little crimp, kind of reform or reshape this one to look like a, a buckle that would snap in. Okay, like so. And then I'm going to connect this belt to the first belt that I made to show you how to make a single piece right belt that we'll add to the seat and it'll look really good. So just like I did before with the uh, connecting the buckles, I'm gonna take this belt that I just deformed the buckle. I'm gonna fold over the other end, put a little glue in there, and I'm gonna take the first belt that I made and I'm gonna loop it in like so. I'm gonna fold it over like so, okay? So again, I made the buckles here a little bit bigger uh, than you would typically do. And let me uh, take my tweezers and kind of reform this here in a second and make it look good and then we'll put it on the seat. Now I've got the complete belt. You can see here where I've connected uh, the two belts together with that center buckle. You can see at this end, of course, the bent buckle uh, that would go actually snap into the seat belt with the lap belts. Uh, so anyway, I will uh, bend this harness. The good thing about this lead foil is it just bends so easily uh, and it doesn't leave like crease lines or anything like that. So I'll uh, add it to the seat here in whatever way, you know, however I want it, this thing, and I'll mold it in place and then we can affix it to the seat with uh, CA. All right, so I've added it to the seat back. In this case, I just put a little CA here, strapped it down, and then uh, folded it into place to represent kind of the right side uh, shoulder harness. Uh, in this case, you can see I didn't even affix it to the base yet. I would have done that later. But you can sit here and you can manipulate it, kind of shape it, put it in whatever place you want, right? Give it some dimension. And then just basically repeat this process for the other shoulder strap and then for the lap belts. Um, you can take some of the lap belts, drape them over the seat, right? Just to give some added dimension. And then, like I said, the finished product on like this P47, uh, it looks quite the part. Now in this case I added, you can see uh, down here, a couple of additional straps just to give it a little extra dimension, kind of covering up that uh, intermediate or connecting buckle. Same thing down here on the lap belts. Uh, but you get the idea. Kind of an effective uh, technique when added to your models and then paint it up nicely. Really gives it a nice, uh, a nice detailed dimension. So thanks for watching. Follow, like uh, my YouTube video channel. Uh, Flying S Models, uh, and uh, also you can check me out on Facebook at Flying S Models, or check out my uh, website, which is uh, still in development, uh, FlyingSModels.com. Uh, feel free to contact me either through Facebook or through my uh, website if you got any questions, need any other information about uh, this uh, technique or any of the other techniques that I've posted so far.